Hey everybody, <clears throat> how you doing? It's Steve with Reef Radio. Thank you so much for joining in. We're doing a Saturday recording so all our UK friends can join us. Today we're going to be talking about sumps. And, uh, you know, do you have a sump? What a sump is? What brand do you like and why? Um, and what's going on? Let's say hi to some of our friends here first. We've got Will Santiago, Chris Coleman, Ed's Fish Tank Extreme, Anthony Mamos, I hope I'm saying that right, Fred Fish, fellow Chicagoan, Philip Tunnell from California, Albert Gatherite, and Albert says, you say 20 to 30 minutes for a show every time, but it always turns out to be longer. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mike Hunt. I hump my sump. All right, Mike. Glad you're here, man. Mike Lemming cannot join us because he's working, which makes it better for all of us. Shout out to CJ's Aquariums. Shout out to Aaron's Aquarium. Aquariums. I always get confused if it's plural or singular for Aaron. Okay. Yes, Matt Bork. Socks are to be avoided at all costs. I used to use sump socks no more. I got tired of cleaning them. That'll be another show. Um... Okay, so here we go. Let's turn this music down a little bit. So welcome to the show, Reef Radio. We're doing a Saturday morning show for our UK friends. I don't know if it's going to be Friday at 9 p.m. Central. It used to be 10. 10 a little too late. I think we're going to do 9 p.m. Central. I know, I keep going back and forth, whatever. Had some uh, technical difficulties with the show last night. Thank you very much for you guys for just sticking with me while it got figured out. It was a Google error, but we'll not talk about that. Now let's get on with the show. If you guys want to call and leave a voicemail, right now the phones are set to go right to voicemail. And if you want to call, I'll set up phone lines to receive calls at the end of the show. But that number is 630-503-6017. If you want to call, you can do it now. It'll just go to right to voicemail. And then I will always use voicemails on the show. So let's talk about sumps. By the way, we got the instant message going on this side of the screen. So you guys can read what the viewers are saying. Uh, Let's see. Albert, you're in Chicago as well. Awesome. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> what? Okay, let's back up a little bit. When you had an aquarium, when you were a kid, a freshwater tank, you had what they called a hang on the back filter, and the water would flow into the hang on the back filter through a foam pad that had carbon in it, and that would clean the water. You'd have to replace this pad, you know, every week or whatever. The more fish you had, the more fish crap and food would be in it, you'd have to replace it. Hang on the back filters, in my opinion, are ugly because I don't like to see wires and cords and filters and things hanging all over the aquarium. It's a mess. I like things as clean as possible. So what you have for that then is a really nice aquarium that are kind of priced a bit worth it. The Red Sea Reef. These are really nice aquariums. And these are all in one aquariums. JBJ makes the same type model, which I have a JBJ 45. CJ's Aquariums is known for his JBJ 45. He does a fantastic job with it. Check out his channel. Um, Now here is a JBJ, what it looks like. Now the reason why they call it an all-in-one is because the aquarium and the filtration, everything is built into the tank. It's an all-in-one. Now, if you were to take this tank and empty it, remove everything and get rid of the water, this is what you would see. Now, behind behind everything, there's usually it's solid black. And behind this, you see your, um, your filtration ways. You've got um, the water is going to flow in from the... Uh, you see the uh, the slots in the upper left and in the upper right. 
the water from your tank is gonna flow through those into the back and flow down through mechanical filtration like sponges and whatnot. There's a basket on the left and the right side that houses sponges and carbon and everything to clean out your water. What you put in those baskets and the chambers of the baskets is up to you. Once that water flows through, it's gonna go to the bottom, then up to the top, and then it's gonna flow through, you know, the center where your pumps are, that big chamber in the middle where your two pumps are, it's gonna pump the water back up through your uh, nozzles there, the left and right nozzles, okay? Here is what it looks like from the back. Okay, you've got your power cords, this one's ready to be sold. Where the power cords are, the water's gonna flow up and then down into the center. This is a single overflow. It's gonna flow through the center, through this basket. You can kind of see the different chambers within that basket where your media can be placed, be it pond matrix or carbon or foam or filter floss to filter out the stuff in the water. And uh, it's gonna flow up and then down. And on each side, you're gonna have um, return pumps that pump back into your tank. So everything's gonna cycle through like this. You gotta rinse your, or replace your mechanical filtration, like foam and all that stuff, like at least once a week. The more fish you have, the more often you have to replace it because you don't want water flowing through nasty stuff. All right, so here's a JBJ again, all-in-one, all right? I love the all-in-ones because they're easy to take care of. All right, so what you're gonna do with a larger aquarium is you're gonna have a sump. Now a sump looks like this, all right? This is gonna go underneath your aquarium, your main aquarium, like your 55 gallon, your 75 gallon, your 125 gallon, 240 gallon, 420 gallon. The larger aquarium you have, the larger sump you're gonna want. Now a sump is where all your uh, filtration is gonna reside, and this is how it works. You see in the upper left, your aquarium, if it's called a reef-ready aquarium, and most aquariums are like this, you're gonna have holes. If it's a one overflow, you're gonna have one hole drilled in the bottom of your glass. If it's a dual overflow, you're gonna have two holes drilled in the bottom of the glass. Um, if it's in the bottom, a hole in the bottom of your glass is going to allow the water to fall out of your tank, which sounds really scary to you newcomers, but that's what you want. Um, the water is going to flow out of that hole, connected by a watertight PVC connection. So where it says drain line from tank, think of that as being a PVC connection. The water is going to literally fall out of your tank into your sump. This box right here, that is an open aquarium that stays underneath your main aquarium in your stand. The water is gonna drain into the first chamber, and by the way, you can put anything you want in your sump. I don't have anything but a protein skimmer right now, um, and I've got a bio pellet reactor that is being, you know, it's cycling the water, but that's another shell. So the water from the tank is hitting the carbon, which is gonna make your water, you know, Cleaner, get rid of the yellowish tinge and all that stuff. That's another show. We're just going to tell you what the sump is and how it works. It's going to dictate the water flow and how it flows depending on which sump you get. Some people like really simple sumps that are just boxes. Other people like the more complex, like this one I keep showing. It's got three chambers in the middle for various media and sponges and things to catch the fish crap. Some people just use plain rubber made containers. You could do that if you want. It's really cheap that way. These sumps can range anywhere from $200 to up to what, $800, $1,000 I've seen them, which is crazy talk to me, but whatever. So in this picture right here, this is an eShops R300. It looks different, much different than this. This is more of your open design with your baffles, your clear glass plates known as baffles. This is more of boxier. It's by eShops, whereas the water will flow in through the top where those two um, in, uh, inputs are, and it'll go through various containers and compartments. We're seeing the rear of the sump right here by eShops, the R300, and the 
float valve in there, the little white ball in there. That's going to be for a refugium. A little small for a refugium, but this is a nice sump, although there have been complaints on this because they say that the top tends to warp where the eShop's logo is, and that's a lid that keeps everything quiet. Um, meaning no water splashing, you won't hear anything. Here's another sump, very clean design. You've got dual overflows going through sump socks. Those white bags, which I hate, they're gonna collect all the debris and fish food and everything in the waste. That's an excellent idea. However, these need to be cleaned, thrown in the washing machine, that's the best route. Turn them inside out, throw them in your washing machine. No soap, no bleach, just a dual spin cycle twice. So a total of four times does the trick. And it gets messy, it's a hassle, it's one more thing to clean. I don't have sump socks. Um, I use the rotter tube, and um, now because my sump is so small and my protein skimmer barely fits, the rotter tubes don't fit. Um, video on that later. But um, these are just some sump uh, examples for you guys, okay? Um, let's get back to this diagram. So the water goes back up into the chamber where the protein skimmer is. It says skimmer. And from there, the water gets bubbled, oxygenated, the solids are taken out of your aquarium, and then you've got your heaters in your sump as well. I don't put my heaters in to heat the water for your fish. I don't put them in the sump because if you move your skimmer around or anything else that might be in there, you could break your heaters, which are glass. All right. I keep one heater and one overflow in my main tank that is not seen and I keep the second heater and the second overflow that's not seen. I have two heaters because if one goes out, the other one will kick on. I've got the second heater to kick on set for two degrees lower. So it'll kick on at like 76. The first one is set to go on at 78. All right. Uh, after the skimmer chamber, it flows up and down into the live rock. Live rock is where the beneficial bacteria lives. You need beneficial bacteria in your aquarium to break down all the nasty stuff and to convert the ammonia from fish pee and fish waste that breaks down in uneaten food into nitrites, which breaks down into nitrates. I used to have live rock in my sump long ago, no longer. I don't have that much live rock at all. I use, you know, very little ro live rock because I want my fish to have more swimming room. And I don't put it in the sump either. I like to have my sump as clean and clear as possible. Then you can put a little power head in your sump, is in the diagram, because you want to have water flow to blow that detritus around. To be honest, if you could fit the power head in the skimmer compartment, I'd put it in there. Um, so it blows the stuff around off the floor of the sump, so the skimmer can pick it up and export it. Um, now at the very end, you have the return pump, the clean water, if you will, gets pumped right back to your aquarium, and this whole process continues, and your uh, aquarium gets cleaned out. That's what a sump is. Now, as far as my aquarium, I have my original eShops, I think it's an R100, I think it's a 10 gallon. That's too small for a 125 saltwater aquarium, 125 gallon. I need more of like a 30 to 40 gallon so they're expensive and I don't want to spend the money I do like my sump but I think I'm gonna do is go to Petco today and purchase either a 20 or a 40 gallon and put that underneath my tank probably a 20 gallon because I can easily put that underneath my um, aquarium so I'll have 20 plus 10 30 gallons it'll be much better and um, I'll adjust the flow rate so the water is like a couple inches from the top of the 20 gallon aquarium that I'm gonna buy today. This weekend, as Mike Lemming reminds us, Petco is having a uh, dollar per gallon sale. So I'll pick up a 20 gallon for 20 bucks. I'll place that and let the first overflow flow into the 20 gallon with a little pump that's gonna pump the water into the second uh, sump and that sump is going to do all the work that I just talked about and then both pumps are going to pump it back out so I'm going to have one return from the overflow going into the first aquarium and the second one 
overflowing into the second sump. All right, so duels, one going into one aquarium, one going into the sump, and then I'm gonna get the water from the 20 gallon aquarium, like I said, into the uh, pump that's gonna pump. Now, people have said, why don't you just cut a hole or two in the side of the aquarium and the sump that you currently have and use a bulkhead and connect like one inch PVC pipe so you've got this large sump. The water will just flow from one into the other. That's a great idea, but I don't have the glass cutting tools and um, I then have to drain everything and remove the sump and do all that. So I might just use um, a simple pump method to chain them together uh, until I can afford a larger sump next year. Um, the danger of this is if your pump fails to continually pump water into the, you know, from the 20 gallon aquarium to the sump, then you could have a mess, it could overflow, and if you're not home, that's not cool. So I might put two pumps in there, two smaller pumps, so they're always pumping the water. If one fails, the other one will take over. What are the chances of both of them failing? Let's not ask that question. All right, let's go to the chat, guys. Will is saying he's at 30 ppm and can't get them down. Tried many things except to remove them. He's talking about nitrates. Um, Afami says use bio pellets. will remove phosphates and nitrates. Keep the marine pure. Now, Afamle, I, I don't know if I'm saying your, your name correctly. You know what? I removed my Marine Pure Block. Now, let, I'll do a show on this another time, but just while we're talking about this, Marine Pure Blocks, for those of you who don't know, are incredibly porous, and they give you, like, thousands more square footage um, of living space for your bacteria and supposedly your anaerobic bacteria, which breaks down nitrates. So it get, so you can get away with using a lot less rock in your aquarium because it's marine pure blocks and balls will break down the ammonia because there's a lot more bacteria, beneficial bacteria living that's alive on this marine pure block. Now, my nitrates were pushing 80. They were in my sump, the marine pure block was. And I did everything I could. I was vacuuming my sand. For those of you who don't know, nitrates are the last phase in the nitrogen cycle. Food gets broken down and fish pee and waste. Any type of waste goes from ammonia to nitrites to nitrates. You gotta get rid of the nitrates by using a great protein skimmer or massive water changes. Um, you need anaerobic bacteria to break it down. They say that the marine pier block houses anaerobic bacteria because it's thicker than the marine pure balls. Anaerobic bacteria needs very low oxygen to survive. And it lives in the center of these blocks. So I figured, great, I'm gonna try to get my nitrates down. They never ever got my nitrates down. And I heard that there were counterfeit blocks made in China. Mine came in a marine pure uh, box, but they say that some of those were, a lot of those were counterfeit. So, <clears throat> guess what? I got fed up, I just said, screw this, it's coming out of my sump, I took it out. Within a week, week and a half, my nitrates, without doing anything else, went from like 80 to a little above 50. So it dropped 30 by 30 once that marine pure black was gone. Coincidence? I don't know. Uh, let's see. All right, so Will says he cleaned the marine pure spheres, the balls, after a few months and so much crap came out of them. See, so how could it not be a nitrate factory? So what I'm gonna do, like I've removed the marine pure block, that's why as an experiment, I removed everything from my sump. Everything. You saw the last video what I did, I've got a canister filter constantly um, pulling water out of the sump filtering it and replacing it. And once a week I replace all the foam sponges, which by the way, there's not much waste coming out of that sump. So I've got like a canister filter rated for like a 150 gallon aquarium, filtering a 10 gallon sump. And I've got in there my uh, pond matrix as well to take care of the nitrates, which are supposed to be really good. All right, 
So, there you go. So, what kind of sumps do you guys have? You guys want to let me know? CJ's in the house. CJ's in the house. What's up, you guys? Um, what I'm going to do, if you want, because the show is almost over, believe it or not, I'm going to turn uh, phone calls on. You guys, if you want to call, you can now. Reef Spy, you know what? There's there's not a Saturday edition of uh, Reef Radio. Um, I did this for our UK friends and our Australia friends because it's way too late for those guys. And uh, Reef Radio, I'm probably going to do Friday nights at 9 p.m. I just wanted to see how many people are watching this. To be honest, so far, mm, a little less than Friday nights, but we'll see. You guys put in the comments if you prefer Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central or Saturdays. Once in a while, I'll do the, uh, the European show. That's what I'm going to call it. If you guys want to call in, you can now. 630-503-6017. We're talking about sumps. Let me type that in here. We're going to keep the calls to about a couple minutes. So everyone has a chance to call, and that way the show won't take too long. Here we go. Here's someone. Hey, what's going on? This is Steve. Hey, Steve. It's Ed. What's up, dude? How you doing? I'm not going to crash you this time, am I? We'll find out, man. You always do. Every time Ed calls in, <laughs> after he hangs up, he completely destroys the show. He annihilated us. He took us off the air last night, for those of you who are watching. I'm right. a gremlin. You're something. I don't know what. <laughs> I just called in because... Uh... Uh, Aaron had a major catastrophe in his aquarium in England. What happened? He lost. He lost his naso. He lost his uh, his uh, what do you call it? Uh, butterfly fish. He lost another tang. They all died. Ick. What? Yeah. God. Oh my God. I want. I don't know if he. He, he well he, he obviously he didn't quarantine no he didn't i left him a message to call in for you but i guess he had he didn't uh, respond that sucks well aaron if you're watching let's do a show about this if you want i'm so sorry to hear that about your tank man that tank is phenomenal it's fucking gorgeous pardon my italian and he busted his ass he's got everything set up just right and then the fish loss i know he's he says that he feels like he's been gutted because of oh, all the fish he lost. God. So yeah, you really got to quarantine. I mean, even even with the advanced system he has, he probably just jumped in the two too fast, putting all those fish in at the same time. That's what I think. I mean, he well, he put him somewhere in holding. Maybe I don't know. I mean, it, 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 something came in on something, and. Um, you know, that's how my brother got it. I mean, my brother quarantined all his fish, and everything was cool in his new tank, and now he's got a 75-gallon running. But, you know, uh, he he bought, like, three corals, one from each different reef store, and he just he put the corals in. He didn't know no one quarantines coral. He even bought a couple more snails. He got ick, and he didn't lose any fish, but his whole tank had a major outbreak. Um, it came in. He just... Put it in, and some of the water got in, and the parasites were in that water, and there you go. Every time I buy snails, or I buy shrimp, or I buy any corals, I do a water, a clear water drip with fresh water. Yeah. And I tell you what, it'll save your ass, man. Yeah, you so. have to. You have to. Like, for starfish, I put my sand sifting starfish in a saltwater bucket from my tank put a little bit of water that it came with you know because you, you know you can't get rid of all of it then i did like yeah. a bucket transfer using rubbermaid containers like eight times just salt water <laughs> constantly so at the end of the eight times back and forth back and forth i was hoping that there'd be no water left that it came in with and then i threw them into my 125 gallon tank no problems so that's a method too but that's terrible. Have I have not seen the video um, on that? It, it's on his Facebook page. Uh, he's probably not in the mood to make a video. Probably not because he hasn't been on for over a week. I guess he's uh, you know pretty upset what's going on with his fish tank. Oh, but 
Yeah, so my uh, my sump is a tsunami. It's a 36 by 14 by 16, and it's 40 gallons. I did the math on that. Wait, say that again. I'm going to write that down. 36 by 14 by 16. That's your 30-gallon sump? It's a 40-gallon. Oh, 40. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I instant messaged you the uh, description on your Facebook. All right, thank you very much. And I'm I'm waiting for the guy to tell me how much it might cost to ship up there. Good, thank you. I love that sump. Um, so. I also sent you a picture of it before I set it up too. It's on your Facebook. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a clear picture of it. All right, let me <clears throat> let me pull that up. I want to do that uh, so I can get to it so these guys can see it. It's a beautiful sump. I mean, I've had the best luck with this thing. And it'll definitely oh, help that's, you. Because, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I'm going to... saving it now. And I'm going to have these guys look at it. All right, well, I'll let you get on with your day, man. Well, I want to bring this picture up first okay. um, and I want you to just talk about this I'm loading it now so the guys can see okay. it on the air and you tell tell them a little bit about it all right so here no it is here's, here's a picture uh, you can see it in a few seconds there so this is your right. sump this is a 40 gallon that's a that's exactly what I'm looking for it's clean and it's an open design it's per put together perfectly too. I still don't see the picture. I guess it's it just quite came a up now. On it. it just came oh, up now. Okay. See it? No, I'm I'm looking at a live uh, stream on the computer. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, all right. Okay, so as you can see, the water comes in from the two chambers, the two inlets. Yeah, and on the left up. there. Yep. On the left, and but I took that foam out, and I have carbon, and I have foam pads in there. Then in it the, goes in the first chamber there. there. Okay. Yeah. The, then it goes into the. Uh, you got one, two, three. The the bigger chamber next to the uh, filter. Yep. That's where I have my skimmer. And then it goes into that chamber, and then it goes into this the next chamber where I have my chato and my light. Okay. And. Uh, I'm running an eShop right now, 150 TSK, so I'm going to upgrade to the 200 eventually. So then it goes into the Chato, then it goes into the next chamber. I did leave this foam pad here, and it goes in there and goes into a 700 uh, Rio pump into a 9-volt or 9-volt uh, uh, chamber for a UV sterilizer. Mm -hmm. Goes into a 2500 Rio pump, and it goes back into my my main display all right so that's awesome i have two rio pumps which i absolutely love never failed me i've got a rio 1750 and i've got a rio 2500 and how often do you i like that you keep the foam block the 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 one on the right you have to because of that shadow um how often are you cleaning that out that that foam block uh does it get crapped up quickly or right yes yeah. yes today i'm going to go ahead and clean it out and put the old the other one in and i'm going to rinse it out and let it dry out and about every month i do that well how often about a mo every month oh really that's it okay that's it, yeah well that makes sense because you got your skimmer in the first chamber and then the chato so um yeah that that makes sense now is that a standard foam block yeah it's a standard foam block yes okay that's a that's the exact sump I'm looking for. It's really I like I I really like the uh, the open design. That's it's simple and that's what you know what you need. You don't want all this happy crap, you know. What I mean? Yeah, all these crazy chambers and all this shit. This is what I like. See, this is what I designed. This is what I told him I wanted. Well, this is, and this th is what, okay. And this is what I got. I like I like this design. I do. I like I want the same one. Uh, and you gave me the dimensions, right, for the chambers? Uh, the ch I didn't. I can get them for you too. But the the whole thing is thirty four by fourteen by sixteen. 
Very nice. I just want to make sure my protein skimmer can fit. You know, I'm sure it, it will. Well, no, actually it will because the one I want, the one you have, will fit in my my, my chamber. I measured it. Oh, good. That's awesome. And actually, it's shorter than the one I have right now, so it'll fit even better. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, because mine is like 22, and I think yours is like 21. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, 21. So it, it's actually it'll fit in there perfectly because I made sure I measured it before I uh, was going to get it. Awesome. Well, this is, you know what, this will make that guy's life easier. I don't know, depending how much. Um, I'd like to get the same one, so that's perfect. That's that's the design I want, so that'll make his life easier. And let's see, you don't have to worry about any sump socks. Yeah, screw that. And it's got two inlets, so you could have the two two uh, tubes coming down from your tank into it. And I probably would uh, get two return uh, pumps for your tank. It would extremely make the flow better too. Yeah, I've got two right now. Oh, you do got two going in. Yes. Or is it one? Oh, okay. I, have I, thought, two. I thought you might just have one. Oh, no, okay, in cool. the last chamber, um, yeah, because the sump sits right above one of the returns going back to the tank. That's my Rio 1750, and then for okay. the one going to the left side of the sump, the opposite end of the tank, I've got a Rio 2100 or 2500. 25. 25. 25 yeah. Oh, I see. Because it's further away, you want more power. Right. right. Yep. So gotcha, I've, gotcha. I've got two of the Rios. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea, man. Yeah. So I love the sump. That's the one I want. I mean, it's. I mean, you, you can't get a sump like this that's commercially made that good for that kind of money. You know, and it's it's rated for a two forty. So I mean, you wanted to get a two forty eventually. Yeah. Bingo, you got it. Awesome. Cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Talk to the guy. I'll call him if I have to, and. I'll deal with them I'll, if I have to. Sure, I'll, I'll leave or you, you deal no, with them. Yeah, okay, no problem. You be my guy. I'll be your guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe tsunami will uh, support your channel. <laughs> maybe he'll, maybe he'll give us all sums for free. You know, if we mention them. <laughs> hey. <laughs> he was really support. He was really surprised that I actually did a video on it. He was like, "Wow, he did. Wow, he likes it that much, huh?" Well, tell him, tell him that I'm really interested, and I'll I'll do what I can for him. You know, uh, I'm not looking for freebies, but whatever. I'll, I I always talk about product, and I love this, so I, I do want one now. After I've seen it, I want this. No problem. We'll get the ball rolling, man. Cool, man. You have a good day now. Oh, Matt asked a question. Oh, you just answered him, Matt. I just answered him. Okay, yeah, three hundred cool. bucks. That's great. But he charges nine hundred twenty-five dollars for shipping, so. That's what he gets it, you. You get a, you get a $15,000 uh, fee for me for talking about it. R okay, there. So you're looking at like, I don't know, seventeen grand and change, roughly. Exactly. Give or take, give or take 500 exactly. bucks. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good talking to you. Good talking to you. Hopefully you don't break the show this time. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's still working, so I guess we're on roll. Yeah, until you hang up, then we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why you have me hang on. <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. I'll talk, talk to you later. All right, see ya. Bye bye. All right, you guys. Man. All right, someone's calling. Let's see. This will be the test to see if only Ed breaks stuff. <clears throat> this is Steve. Steve. CJ Mackey. What's here tonight. up? Hey, dude. CJ's Aquariums. What's up, man? I can hear you perfectly. Good deal. I just want to call you before you end the show. I don't know if you've seen my message. No. Uh, What's up? Check out Clement. Clement Mo Reef, I think that's how he spells it. Yeah. Um, he has a double sump side by side, has a daisy chain together through PVC siphon. He made a video of it um, a right. few weeks back, and I was like, man, that looks that looks dangerous as hell. He was like, it never failed him. Well, so, guess what he's doing that right might now? Be another option. Guess what he's doing right now? Uh, he's, uh, you know, replacing his warped floor because he said it it's never broke. So that's what he's doing right now as we speak. 
Oh, no, no joke. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, okay. I was just wondering. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, I hope he doesn't jinx himself. You know what? Right, right. Well, I remember you said you were going to baby train him with, with a pump. I was thinking it might be an easier way to go to Home Depot. You, you know, you like PV to PVC, man. So yeah. I was like, hey, it might be worth a shot. I just want to make sure you've seen that because, you know, I think you're getting ready to pull the trigger here soon. So I was like, hey, mm. let me make sure I drop that bug in his ear. No, I'm not going to do it soon. I, I really like that tsunami tank, and I'm a, a sump, and I'm going to probably get that. Um, not till next year, probably, because, you know, funds are really tight and crazy. But um, I want to go and get that 20-gallon today. This is going to just, like, tide me over, and then I can use that 20-gallon as, like, a quarantine for my JBJ45 after I get this sump next year, or as money allows. Um, I've heard bad things about that because if the siphon does stop well you know what's going to happen right right that's well, why I, I, guess, would, I would never do that that's why i want to use a pump and maybe put right. two of them in there well i guess it depends on what you trust more you know a siphon or a pump that's what it boils down to i guess they're both evils which one is, is the lesser of the two evils i know is it, and then kinda, it's kind of where you're at the idea that i really like is very similar to what you're saying it pretty much um, where you would drill a hole in your aquarium or acry acrylic box aquarium and then um, drill a hole through your um, sump currently that's smaller, and I would use a uniseal. Now I was thinking about uniseal, or people are saying bulkheads, and then connect them with the PVC, which is great. That would work great, but it would be difficult to work on underneath your tank because, you know, you know, I don't know right. much room. It's, it's cramped. It's cramped. It's cramped spaces. It's gonna be. But bad. Yeah, I will tell you this though. Um, if you if you did if you did try to do the pump or siphon thing, you remember everyone has the fail safe when you run a siphon, you drill a hole in the top, and you attach a Tom's Aqua Lifter pump to it to where it pulls That's it. water through it to make sure no air builds up to break the siphon. That may be a that may be a uh, more secure way of doing it if you tried it. So do so, what now? You know, I, just like those guys that have the overflows from their tank, they'll right. hang on the back overflows. Yeah. They have a hole in the top with a time aqualifters pump uh -huh. hooked to it to where it continually pulls air from the siphon if it builds up to where it will never break, to where the siphon will never break. So that may be a way you can do it underneath the tank. I'm just saying uh -huh. if it was me, that's probably the way I would do it. If I had to, that's, <clears throat> that's by the way I would try it. That's a really but you can, good idea. you can you can check it out. You'll see our, all over YouTube. You know how it is. Do your homework, man. Make your own decision. Right. But, what if you or I was thinking about what if you I don't know. You 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 would you could find a way to com always keep that tube completely submerged mm -hmm. underwater, so it would never come out, so it would never break. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's just you I know what. That, I think there's a way. It's risky either way. I mean, You're the best right. way is to connect them, but, you know, it's about minimizing the risk, I guess. However you, however exactly. you want to do it. Every way is scary. I mean, I know there'd be some times where I'd be thinking, you're at work, and it's like, I hope it's okay. You know, like, I really want to have no glass lids on my aquarium, but I've lost a couple of fish because they jump out, and that just scares me. I, I, you know, because you might come home, as I did, and it's like, where's my fish? And you find them, like you said, potato chips on the carpet. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine a tiny potato chip, a, a, a ten foot potato chip. I don't know about that. That'd, <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be a little, <laughs> that'd be a little depressing, man. I couldn't imagine losing a fish that uh, that was, you know, three hundred dollar purple tank or something. I might, I might uh, disappear for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would too, man. <laughs> so that'd be it. That'd be it. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure I dropped that on you, though. I'm gonna hold up the show. I know it's almost time to. Time to roll. I'm gonna get to get to these pancakes and finish watching Reef Radio. Awesome, man! <laughs> Thanks for calling in, dude. Hey, Thanks no for the problem, tip, man. Take it easy. Hey, hopefully I didn't break the show like Ed. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> I don't think All you right. will. If you, if you, man. when you hang up and it doesn't break, then we know Ed's doing you know. something. <laughs> He's trying right, to monopolize right. us, and he'll probably be coming after you next. Oh man, look. Don't give him my number. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Ed. <laughs> All right. Peace, man. All right, man. <laughs> Bye. Hey. Look at that. We're still on the air.
CJ hung up and we're still on the air. So we know it was Ed. This is Steve. Hey, am I going to break the show again? Yes, you are. <laughs> I, trust me, it ain't me, dude. I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong on your end. I don't know. Everyone else calls <laughs> and it's cool and they hang up and the show continues. Maybe you need to get uh, caller ID and when I call, don't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to mark your contact as never answer. <laughs> all right, man. Let's see, let's see if I break it now, all right? Oh, good. Thanks later. for calling for that. Okay. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Hello? Hey, we're still working. You know why? I think that's because I hung up on him first. So that's the plan. I'm going to have to hang up on Ed first. You know what? Respite, send it to my uh, Facebook page. Go to Rotter Tube Reef on Facebook and just send me an instant message and attach the photo. That's where I have everything sent. See, that's the problem. I'm going to have to drain most of, if not all of, my 125 gallon. Have like three or four guys assist me in lifting that thing off so I can put a sump in. That's going to suck. I don't want to go through that hassle, but whatever. This is Steve. Hey, Steve, it's Reef Spy. Reef Spy, what's up, man? This, you guys got to check these pictures out. You're going to have to tell us all about this. Let me just get it set up here. <laughs> this is insane. I need it's to quit my YouTube. Progress. <laughs> huh? What, really? I need to quit my YouTube channel because what I have compared to you, oh my God, is nothing. Nah, I learned from all you guys, man. I just sit here watching the YouTube and get me ideas from everybody out there. Oh my god. Alright, you guys, check out his tank. This is Reef Spice tank. Gorgeous. How, what size tank is that? That's a 180. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, man. That's insane. That's really nice. Okay, so, <clears throat> so go ahead and just kind of tell us about the tank. Um, there's his tank with the sump. I'll, he gave us a beautiful picture of the tank and the sump, and here's the sump only. So, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's uh, you know, your standard Marine Land 180 gallon uh, you know, tank with the quarter overflows. Uh, the sump, I, it's a custom built. I just did a 40 gallon breeder, and um, so I went to a, a glass shop and had them cut the baffles for me. Uh huh. Uh, just siliconed them in to where I wanted them. Uh, so it's just a classic, you know, three chamber design. I got the first chamber with my skimmer and the overflows coming in. Mm -hmm. So the two overflows are going into the sump socks. Uh, the middle section was supposed to be, you know, the original vision was that was going to be my refugium. And um, well, I'll get into that. So there is a refugium there. So I have some Cheeto going in there. Um, goes through the bubble trap and into the return section. Uh, after I was setting this up, you know, the original vision was to have the auto top off, you know, off to the right there and have like a 10 or 20 gallon uh, container there. Um, once I got this thing set up, I kind of changed my mind and I put the auto top off in the basement, uh -huh. which is directly underneath of the tank. So I'm basically just pumping the water up from underneath. So that left this whole section open for me. Uh, uh, so I put the refugium in on the right hand side there, which is just the standard 10 gallon tank. Yeah. Um, so I have that actually just a little stand that I built. So it's a little bit above the original sump. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, and so what I did was I drilled, um, I, I created like a little overflow in there and drilled the side of that tank, uh, added some PVC coming out of there that, you know, returns back into the main, uh, you know, return section. So I just have a little, uh, maxi jet pump up in you know, behind the skimmer, mm -hmm. which is pumping water through the, you know, uh, dual media reactor and it splits off and it also goes into the refugium over there hmm. which I have you know, all sorts of algae in there um, and tons of copepods and stuff growing in there and I'll tell you what man, when I put this thing in there my nitrates and phosphates have tested zero hmm. you know, ever since I've had this thing run in so you know, knock on wood I hope it stays that way but when you put this 10 uh, gallon refugium in there yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, it, I mean, I put that in there while I set this up, but did the whole tank up. Uh -huh. um, so I don't know, you know, if it would have been higher without it or not, but um, it's been working for me for, you know, this has been going for, uh, well, this tank itself has only been running since March. 
um, I had a 90 gallon tank that I had upgraded, so I moved everything you know from the 90 into here mm -hmm. once I got this set up. But, but you know, yeah. So basically, um, I'm just pumping from you know the main sump into the 10 gallon, having to go through an overflow, and then you're back into the sump. So there's no reason if you you know you wanted to keep your current sump and just add on to it, you yeah. can do something similar to what I did, I guess. That is great. Now, <clears throat> so you you've got the water, if I understand correctly, you've got the water going from your your sump that you custom made into the 10 gallon. Yes. So and then, right behind the skimmer, there's a little pump, um, and there's a clear tube that kind of goes up and along oh, the top okay. white part. You see that clear tube, and then it feeds into the uh, 10 gallon, oh, and then okay. the 10 gallon just has a little overflow that I built. You know, like oh, the overflow okay. right back in. Now I yeah. get it. I get it now. I I didn't know about the pump. That that's a great idea. And how are you connecting that PVC from the uh, 10 gallon refugium? Okay, the, so do you see that little black uh, tube that's coming off the left of this? Yeah, is that um, a uniseal? Well, so I just have a standard bulkhead, and that black tube is not a rigid PVC. It's that flexible PVC you can get. Yeah. Uh, which which I think is pretty important, because you don't want to bang this thing, because that 10-gallon is pretty thin. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want to crack the glass on that thing. So I use a flexible tube there. If you do bang it, it's not going to you know, put any stress onto the pane of the glass there. That's a great idea. Yeah, and that black pipe just drops right into the uh, return section there. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was, when I heard you guys talking, I said, well, I think I have something set up. Yeah, you do. It's the bill. <laughs> yeah. And I've read a lot where people will raise that uh, smaller aquarium, you know, for, so you get exactly. that flow. Um, well, that's what I did. Just use gravity to, you know, dump it back in, and there's no right. worry about the siphon breaking or anything like that. If the pump goes out, the water stops flowing. That's yeah, about it. Did you cut right? Exactly. Did you cut that hole in the ten-gallon aquarium? I did. Yes. What did you use? Did you use one of those? I can't remember what they're called. Like a circular. Yeah. So you could buy um, basically a bit to. to yeah. Uh, that, right. I've got that. Yeah. So it's the just the standard thing. And you know what? If you've never done it before, I had never cut the glass before. You know. I, the first time I did it was on a tank that I had built before this one. It's a lot easier than you would think that it is. Um, just take your time, watch the uh, yeah, the videos on YouTube, and the hole gets cut in about in less than five minutes. It's, huh. it's really no, no okay. big deal. If you have the proper bit you know, for your drill, it just goes right through. That's great. So, That's a really, yeah. really good idea. Well, hopefully it's going uh, you know, put some ideas in your head. I don't know, but... I love your setup, man. All those you know, tanks you have in there, man. I I got four in my tank, and I'm afraid to put any more in. <laughs> yeah, I'm, they're all I'm, getting alongside, and you know, that's, I think that's the limit for me. I kept pressing my luck. I know. I mean, <clears throat> and my tank yeah. is smaller than yours, and I've got. But you know what? My one of my tricks is, like I said, I don't have barely any. Um, I don't have that much rock in there. You know, I mean. Yeah. You know, my my ammonia is always zero. Everything's cool. It's just that. Tangs are messy, and I have too many, if you will, and uh, that's why my nitrates are high. But I removed that marine pure block, and now they're lower. And I get, I got the bio pellet reactor, and I believe my next step is I'm gonna do some research on the glass cutting, and I'm gonna elevate yep. that, and I might do this today and get some uh, Cheeto and uh, try this yeah, out. So, so I've got Cheeto in that, you know that middle sump that I have on the left there, just because I had some, so I threw it in there. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with that section. So I've got Cheeto in there, and then I've got all sorts of different, um, I think it's called Calerphala, something like that. I've got yeah. this red grape algae, something else in there. And it's just all growing into a big tangled mess, but man, if you look in there, there's, you can see the copepods, the amphipods, all sorts of things just swimming around in there. That's, man, that's awesome. Yeah. So that it's, is so it's, cool. It's working out, so. Well, I see a lot of the guys in the chat, they're like, how was I not subscribed to this guy? Uh, you know. Well, see, i got to start making some videos, man. i got a couple videos up there, but, yeah, i got to start doing something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to... You got to put the bug in my ear, so... <laughs> we, well, if you did, you'd have a lot of subscribers right away. I mean, you're, you're a cool guy, and your tank is just killer, and you know what you're doing, and... You know, I feel like a fool for 
hey, here's my tank, and then here's no, yours. No, no, dude. <laughs> We're all constantly learning, man. I'm by no means an expert on anything. Well, no one is. <laughs> I learn is, everything from watching these shows, man. <laughs> same with us. Every yeah. week I learn something else. So That is so Good cool. Stuff. How long have you right, been? Man, well, I don't want to take up any more of your time, or you know, or if you got some questions for me, go right ahead. Um, so this tank's been running since March? Yeah, I got this going in about March of awesome. this year. Yeah, so before this one, I had a 90-gallon tank, uh, which I had going for about a year and a half. And it, it all started just with a 10-gallon <laughs> tank. I was watching videos, and I was like, man, I'd love to get a saltwater tank. And yeah. Started with a ten gallon tank, and you know how that goes. You know, it's filled up. You know, before you know it, and yeah, so I, you know, moved it into a twenty gallon. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I'd like to get something bigger. But one on Craigslist, I found a used ninety gallon. You know, somebody was in my neighborhood selling one for like dirt cheap. Uh, so I got that, and I had that going for about a year and a half or so. Um, and you know, things were doing really good with that. And then I just always wanted you know, the big tank. I had this wall here, and it would fit perfectly. So. Uh, finally get the bullet. It's gorgeous. How long is that? Is that six feet then? <laughs> it's six foot, yep. Yeah, that's, six foot by two foot by two foot. That's gorgeous. I would love to see video on this. I know a lot of the guys would too. And they're asking, uh, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, Reef Spy. It's just yeah. Reef Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I'll, I'll start posting some videos, man. I really appreciate what you guys do and for the community. And it's I think it's great, man. I just I love watching the show. I love interacting with all the people, and it's, uh, it's a good time. Me too. And you know what? <clears throat> I think about this a lot because there's a lot of people out there much better than me. Um, yeah. But I just kind of chalk it up to, you know what? I'm pretty good at what I do, and even if I come up with ideas that people might not like or it's not good for them, maybe it'll spark an idea in their mind to say, hey, well, I could do this. Like. Oh, Exactly. Like you, for example, yeah. maybe someone's like, you know what, like me, I don't want to drill into my refugium, or I don't want to yeah. drill into my something, I don't want to drill into my glass aquarium I just got, because I'm going to mess it up. Well, then here you come, and you're like, you know what, raise it up and let gravity do the work. It's stuff like that. Exactly, yeah. It's it's those little things that, you know, you don't think of, and then, you know, once you see it, it's like, why didn't I know that? <laughs> it's so simple. Exactly. And then, <clears throat> yeah. I am... Um, Nothing more than someone who likes the saltwater aquariums, and I like to spread what I learn. And uh, I am the liaison. I am the video multimedia DJ guy, whatever. I love multimedia communications. That's my major. So if I can do that and bring people together, well, that's 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 what I'm bringing. You know. So cool, man. I'm glad you called Keep in. It up. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, man. And uh, you know, I'll catch you guys the next time. Awesome. All right, man. Take care. See you. you too. All right. Bye. And we're still on the air. You know why that is? It's because the caller was not Ed. That's why. Thank you so much to Reef Spy. He's got a killer system, as you guys have just seen. Um, so I guess we'll end the show here. I want to thank everybody for joining. And, uh, yeah, Chris, I know... 20 minutes, the show will be 20 minutes. Nope. So I'm going to edit to get the jag off, off the, uh, off the air. And other than that, that's the show. Uh, you guys put in comments below what sumps you're using, why you like them, how you set it up. If you have ideas for the next live show, let me know. We'll probably do 9 p.m. Central on Fridays. We got a little more viewers, I think. Um... And, you know, check everyone's channel out. And, uh, like I said, comment below on what sump you have, what you recommend, any tips or tricks for joining two aquariums to make a sump. Did you make your own? Was it a hassle, pain in the ass? Or what? And, uh, you know, you want to leave a message for voicemail, call anytime, 630-503-6017. And we will use it on the air. All right, you guys. Reef Spy, thanks again. I want to thank you to everybody who called in. Check out their channels. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time. And happy reefing. Have a great rest of the weekend. <laughs>